metal wings to fly won't take you to the stars. Use the metal for a boat and you won't sail too far. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret pink code, pink code, Signs can be tricky, it can overheat your brain. Signs can be hard to chew, each bite can be a pain. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret pink code. Phenomenal! When we look through the telescope at faraway planets, stars, and galaxies, we're looking not only through space, but also through time. The light that we can see needs some time to reach us. When we look at the sun, for example, we actually see it as it was eight minutes ago. That is the exact period of time that it takes for light to cover the distance between the Earth and the sun. Taking a photo of the closest star, Proxima Centauri, gives us an image that's almost five years old. So we see far away galaxies as they were millions of years ago. Wunderbar! So you're saying when we look at the stars, we see not only far away, but back in time? Precisely, yes. Space is just really boring. But Crash, you're the one who wanted to come. You're right, I did. But I was thinking we'd meet cool aliens and stuff. Have battles with guns that say pew, but there's nothing out here. Nothing but empty space and twinkling stars. And we could see that stuff from Earth. Daco thinks that we're pioneers. Trailblazers here at the dawn of space discoveries. But that means every space experiment we do is of great value to the future. When you think about it, it's exciting. Right. That's about as exciting as math. I want some space pirates. Pretty please. Ah. Oh, look at that. That'll work. <laughs> Crash, are you sure this wasn't, you know, important? I'm making it better. Colleague, please be very careful. This is a crucially vital experiment. Yeah, yeah. System ready to start. All right, cunning invaders from the long ear cottontail cluster. You will not last very long up against Captain Fuchsia's spiky head. Give up, creatures of the Earth. Swear your allegiance to the cosmic carrot or else perish. A firm no. Fellas, since you're not doing anything that matters, come on up! We found something awesome! Just phenomenal! So, what's so awesome and phenomenal? Right there! Right there! Our sun! The sun is the star that binds our solar system together. Everything in our system revolves around the sun. The four terrestrial planets, two gas giants, two ice giants, and all their satellites, and the asteroids, meteorites, comets, and space dust as well. The sun's mass makes up 99.8% of the whole solar system's weight. Our ancient ancestors recognized how much their survival depended on the sun. Because of this, there were many ancient cultures that worshipped the sun. While our understanding of the sun's properties and processes has grown, and we no longer worship it, its size and position in relationship to the Earth remain vital to the survival of life on our planet. If the sun were any bigger or closer, Earth would be too hot for life to exist. And if the sun were any smaller or further away, Earth would be too cold for life to exist. While the sun is the biggest body in our solar system, in comparison to other stars in the universe, it is an average-sized star sometimes called a yellow dwarf star. The closest star to our sun is Proxima Centauri. It's about a seventh the size of our sun and is 4.25 light years away. That means the light from Proxima Centauri takes 4.25 years to reach Earth. 
Sirius, which is two times heavier than our sun, is nine light years away. And Arcturus, which is 25 times bigger than the sun, is 36 light years away. The largest nearby star is Betelgeuse. It's 1,000 times larger than the sun and is 500 light years away. Our sun is about 150 million kilometers from the Earth, or about eight light minutes away. Today, we know a lot about the sun and scientists are always searching for more knowledge. We know the age of the sun, its radius and weight, though visiting the sun ourselves is still a long ways off. Ah, so what? You know you can see the sun from Earth, right? We're here for more than just a regular old gander at the sun. We're about to conduct a very important scientific experiment. <sighs> what do you plan on looking at the sun with? A nerd telescope or something? Nothing like that, my bored, floppy-eared friend. We're going to be trying out a brand new exciting method of traveling in space. What's wrong with the old one? Besides, you know, that it's old and stuff. When night fell and our ancient ancestors could see the stars, some dreamt of exploring space. Throughout history, people discovered new and better ways to travel by land, by water, and eventually even by air. But airplanes rely on atmospheric pressure. So when we pass through our atmosphere and into space, there is no pressure to hold us up. We need another way to move ourselves through airless space. The answer to our problem was jet propulsion. Propulsion relies on Newton's third law of motion that to every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Propulsion shows up in the animal kingdom. For instance, an octopus will propel itself along by sucking water in and then pushing it out. This propels the octopus through the water. Another example of propulsion is the motion of a boat when a person pushes off of it to jump in the water. The boat reacts to the pressure of the jump and moves away from it. Motion occurs in space because the rocket uses an expulsion of fuel to push itself forward. No air is necessary because the rocket is responding to the opposite pressure of the fuel. A rocket must have enough energy to escape the Earth's gravity. At liftoff, the rocket's thrust is created by solid rocket boosters pushing upwards. Russian scientist and physics teacher Konstantin Eduardovich Solkovsky played a key role in the development of jet propulsion by suggesting multi-stage rockets. Multi-stage rockets drop off sections of the rocket as the propellant is used up. This decreases the mass of the rocket, making it easier for the next propellant to push the rocket even further. Groovy as jet propulsion may be, it has one very serious drawback. What drawback? Look at it! It's awesome! To get very far using a jet engine, you'd have to carry way too much fuel. But how do you fly once your fuel supply runs out? Well, we might run across something that can give us a little push. For example, the sun. For real? Holy carrots, huh? how is that? <laughs> Not quite, because the sun hasn't any hands, but it can push all the same with its shining light. Pretty interesting, am I right? Light puts pressure on the items that it hits. Only a little pressure, and yet, out here far away from gravity, that tiny pressure just might help us. <sighs> hmm. Peter Lebedev, a Russian scientist, was the first to measure the pressure of light on a solid body. He took a silver thread, placed a small foil propeller on the thread, and then placed this into a glass flask. He then removed all of the air, and when he directed light from a lamp on the flask, the blades began to spin. Almost 400 years ago, German scientist Johannes Kepler suggested that a solar sail might be used for traveling through space one day. Different space agencies are now planning and building some spacecraft with limited solar sails. But to explore interstellar space, we would need to build sails that are many kilometers across. But of course, then they didn't have the technology for the creation of the large-sized cloth solar sails required. And so, the concept was put on hold until a more advanced and era. And that era is today! We have been able to fabricate a solar sail prototype with the required size and properties. Hmm? 
Solar sail is damaged. Attention, solar sail is damaged. Attention, sail is damaged. <gasps> Hello, is this thing on? Your sail is messed up, yo. Stop the deployment process. If it spreads out in its current state, the solar sail could be ripped to shreds. I can't stop it. The process is automatic once you started it. We've been preparing this for months. A one-of-a-kind experiment. Months of careful preparation. Oh, months, not weeks, not days. Hey, I was hugging that. I don't know if this matters, but unauthorized spacewalk in progress. Just let me... Get us a better picture! It's Crash, look! The sail is still spreading out! Danger! That is dangerously dangerous! Solar sail, 75% deployed. I find this very stressful! Sail successfully deploying. The bunny rabbit did it. Phenomenal! All right, That's Crash! Resourceful Wonderful play. work, dear friend! Come back yeah. inside! I want to shake your hand! Ah. Uh. <laughs> Looks like a job for jet propulsion. Oh, 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 oh. Solar sail completely deployed. We are sailing on the solar wind. <laughs> <laughs>